This episode is brought to you by World of Tanks, the free-to-play multiplayer tank combat game accessible to anyone, whether you're a novice or a pro. You'll jump in the arena and will experience the same thrill as a hundred million other players. Take command of the most iconic tanks and military vehicles of the 20th century. Tank destroyers, artillery, light, medium, and heavy tanks are ready for you to take control of and destroy the enemy. Rush in guns blazing, ambush your opponents with sneaky tactics, or hang back and take them out from afar. Experience tactical gameplay, teamwork, progression trees, and other rewards with 600 plus historically accurate tanks from 11 nations with over 40 maps available. Sign up using the link in the description below and use the code TANKMANIA to get the Excelsior Tier 5, 250,000 credits, 7 days of World of Tanks premium access, 1 garage slot and 100% trained crew, and rent 3 legendary tanks for 10 battles each, including the Tiger 131, Cromwell B, and the T-34-85M. Code valid for new players. Czar Tank, 1915, World War I. Strange Tanks in history. With the outbreak of the First World War, the idea of creating an armored fighting vehicle was born as a solution to the static nature of trench warfare. It was the beginning of the age of tanks. These first tanks, even though unwieldy and capricious, paved the way towards the tanks that would become a dominant force on the battlefield. On the other hand, in these early days of tank development, there were also concepts that were completely different to tanks that we know today. One such model was the Russian Tsar tank, an armored vehicle whose name did not live up to its awkward design. The person behind the project was Nikolay Nikolaevich Lebedenko, an engineer who already had experience working for the Russian army. When the First World War began, Lebedenko thought about a weapon that could help his nation win the war against the Germans and the Austro-Hungarians. At the time, it was artillery that was the most dominant force on the battlefield. It was believed that the side that managed to establish the supremacy of its guns would prevail in winning the war. To achieve this, an army had to make its artillery not only powerful, but also mobile. One of the largest drawbacks of the artillery at the time was its poor mobility on rugged and uneven terrain, typical for battlefields of the time. On the Eastern Front, where there were no extensive road networks, this issue was even more obvious. With that in mind, Lebedenko formed an idea to build a gun carriage with wheels so large that it could overcome any kind of terrain or man-made obstacle. If he managed to construct such a weapon and put it in serial production, he believed Russia would be a step ahead of its enemies. In December 1914, Lebedenko approached Nikolay Yegorovich Zukovsky for help in materializing his ideas. Zukovsky recommended his nephews, Boris Stechkin and Alexander Mikulin, two promising engineers to also participate in the project. The team of four were responsible for making the initial draft of the tank. They named the tank the Nitopir, or the Bat, because the model resembled a bat when carried by the rear wheel. The first obstacle was that the tank demanded a lot of funds to be constructed. Lebedenko and his team therefore made a scaled model powered by a gramophone spring to present to His Highness Tsar Nicholas II Romanov. The Tsar was thrilled with the contraption, primarily its ability to climb over several volumes of his books. He spent an hour playing with it like a toy. In the end, Lebedenko received 210,000 rubles from the Tsar to make a prototype of the tank. In July 1915, the production of the prototype began under the overview of Alexander Mikulin. The tank was made in sections and then assembled several miles away from Moscow at the secret proving ground in the middle of a thick forest. The tank was huge. It was 58 feet or 17.8 meters long, 30 feet or 9 meters high, and 39 feet or 12 meters wide. The base that largely resembled a standard gun carriage had one top-mounted central machine gun turret, two gun turrets on the flanks and one smaller machine gun turret on the belly section. The SAR tank's most distinctive features, the front wheels, were enormous. They were 30 feet or 9 meters in diameter. They were spiked with T-section rims. The inside of the rim overlaid with a wooden cover was pressed against two rubberized car wheels by the means of railway springs. These car wheels, rollers rotating towards each other, turned the big running wheel due to the friction. The rollers were connected to the engine shaft through a pair of bevel gears. If there was a case of the running wheels jamming on obstacles, the rollers activated the safety clutch, preventing the engines from burning out. 
The rear of the tank was carried by a much smaller steel double wheel. The engines used for propulsion were two powerful 240 h-power Maybox. They provided the Sar tank with a speed of up to 10.5 miles per hour, or 17 kilometers an hour. The huge wheels allowed the tank to overcome not only the most rugged terrain, but also trees, houses, and any other kind of obstacles. The Sar tank was envisioned to be manned by a crew of 10 and armed with guns and machine guns. The top central turret was to house a cannon and a Maxim machine gun, and the belly turret was to be armed with several Maxim machine guns. The turrets on the flanks, meanwhile, were planned to house a cannon each. The draft predicted the weight of the tank to be no more than 40 tons. Once completed, the weight of the tank, however, increased to 60 tons due to the use of thicker metal parts for the hull. Instead of being 7 millimeters thick, the hull now had 10 millimeter thick steel plate armor. The armor at the bottom and the roof of the hull were 8 millimeters thick, instead of the initial 5 millimeter thickness. The added weight of almost 20 tons was considered to be the biggest burden for the prototype SAR tank. In August 1915, the tank was brought out for testing in front of a group of Army representatives. The tank was controlled by Mikulin and Stechkin. The beginning was perfect. Stechkin ignited the engines and set the tank in motion. The first obstacle, a birch tree, broke like a match under the tank, to the amazement and thrill of all those watching. The problems began just as the tank moved out on softer terrain, and the small double wheel at the back became stuck in the ground. The problem was that the rear wheel carried a lot of weight and had no propulsion. Not even putting the engines in full power could make it move. The big wheels just kept turning, but the tank was motionless. With the tank stuck in the mud, the test ended up as a complete fiasco. Lebedenko and his team didn't surrender. They tried to solve the problem by installing larger rollers and more powerful engines of 300 horsepower. All their efforts were in vain, and the army decided not to pursue the project. The problem of insufficient power was just one of many drawbacks. The military commission found the construction of large spike wheels too problematic. It made them extremely vulnerable to artillery fire. Just one salvo of artillery shells could destroy the wheel and turn the entire vehicle into a pile of smoking rubble. Not to mention that the size and position of the wheels in front of the guns interfered with their shooting trajectories. For this reason, all of the guns on the tank had a very limited sight angle. In the end, there was an issue with the tank's complexity that caused a high production price. The cost of more than 200,000 rubles was too high for the military budget of the Russian army. The Russians at the time definitely had no material base for the mass production of the enormous Tsar tanks. All of these drawbacks made the Tsar tank completely impractical, especially because the French and the British had already come up with a more effective tank design, using caterpillar tracks instead of wheels. The Tsar tank remains just another dead-end project. It was abandoned right where it became stuck, on the proving grounds in the middle of the forest. It wasn't until 1923 when it was finally disassembled and turned into scrap metal. This episode was brought to you by World of Tanks. Sign up and use the code TANKMANIA to get World of Tanks and those tanks including the Tiger 131. Download link in the description below.